Mark Scar on the Scar Card on 103.7 The Fox. I'm proud to welcome in Mr. Jason Elmore. How are you, my friend? I'm better than nothing at all. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. And we've been playing Jason's music since I got turned on to it not all that long ago by my buddy Keith down in uh, New Mexico. And I thank him for doing that. Rise Up Lights is the new record, Jason. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Yeah, if, if you say Rise Up Lights pretty fast, it sounds like an Australian saying Razor Blades. <laughs> Rise Up Lights. You are correct, and that, that explains the album cover. Yeah, a lot of people ask, is that a Judas Priest throwback? <laughs> it's, well, yeah, I love Priest, but no, it's, uh, it's just for the, the name of the album. I'm silly. I have a goofy sense of humor, so it makes its way into my art. <laughs> Jason, for the uninitiated, for our audience, let's talk about your beginnings as a musician and kind of what drives you to do what you're doing right now. What drives me to do what I do right now is pretty much that I'm too lazy to work. <laughs> I've been doing this for about 25 years now. I'm hesitant to go work for someone else. I'm kind of set in my ways. But I've been playing music since I was a teenager, but I started doing it professionally, I guess, in my early 20s. I was a garbage man for the city of Denison, Texas, and it was a pretty good job. But then I started playing music a couple of nights a week, and that was fun. And I just had to reach that crossroads where do I stay with this nice job and have these benefits, or do I jump all in and, and no plan B into the music thing? And that's what I did, and just haven't looked back since. Awesome. Who would you say your influences are? Lots, man. Uh, I'm influenced by a lot of different types of music. I like a lot of classic country. I like a lot of crooners like B.J. Thomas and uh, Elvis and, and stuff like that. I like a lot of old-school metal. Uh, Black Sabbath is one of my top three favorite bands of all time, probably. Van Halen. I'm kind of known uh, as a blues rock guy. My previous albums have, have been kind of more in that Texas blues vein, that Stevie Ray Vaughan sort of thing. Although I try to, to not do that because everyone around here already does it. <laughs> but uh, I'd say my influences are pretty much all over the place. Kind of like my answer right now. I, I apologize for being so scattered. I pretty much like anything guitar. If it's got guitar in it, played well, I'm all about it. Whether that's classical or, you know, that's what got me into the, the classic country stuff. It's just, there's some really great guitar in that stuff. And of course, several genres of hard rock and metal, everything from, from Zeppelin to Dokken to, uh, you know, Pantera. There's there's, there's just so much great guitar in rock music, of course. I was going to say, Jason, uh, as we're talking, I mentioned to Jason the previous weekend, I sat down and listened to all of uh, Jason's material. He's got four records, and there is definitely, as you mentioned, that blues bass there. But Rise Up Lights is, you're branching out, certainly. I started off, actually, in like hard rock and heavy metal bands. None to, that were noteworthy, just you know, small uh, local bands. And then I got into the blues thing because I've always loved blues, and and, to, and Dallas, Texas has a rich uh, heritage of great blues guitar players. So I came up being really impressed with that. And so after basically getting tired of, of playing in a band with a singer who never would load equipment or or you know <laughs> any of that stuff, I've decided I'm going to learn how to sing myself, and we can split the money less ways. And uh, yeah, I did. I, did that and kind of made a name for myself in the blues and blues rock market but with this album i just kind of wanted to go back to those heavy roots and really kind of tip the hat to early led zeppelin black sabbath ufo van halen of course many of the songs on this album were written right after eddie van halen passed and that really impacted me and i guess it just set me off in, into writing material that honored that style that heaviness and that technically proficient guitar stuff we're talking to Jason Elmore about Rise Up Lights. One thing I did notice almost off the bat is when I put the record in, or actually I saw the video for Fragile, and I thought, gosh, is that Richie Kotzen singing? I bet you get that oh, a lot. Thanks, man. That's, that's one of the best compliments I've gotten. I've, I'm a huge fan of Richie's. I'm a huge Chris Cornell fan from Soundgarden. I've always wanted to sing that way, and I'm going to figure it out one of these days. <laughs> But I've stumbled across Richie's stuff and was like, dang, this guy sounds strikingly like Chris Cornell and can play guitar very well. I went down that rabbit hole a few years ago and, and have never come out. I love Richie and just everything he does. I hang on every note, every word. So thanks. I guess, it's not an intentional thing, but I guess it just creeps it in. And similarly, there's a band called Big Wreck out of yes. Canada. Yes. And their, their front man's name is M. Thornley. Yep. Same exact thing. I, I heard that band one day and went, wow, this guy sounds like Chris Cornell, whoever it is. 
and then come to find out he also played guitar very well and so i i guess i i tend to gravitate towards singers who <laughs> sound like chris cornell and can play guitar well and, and maybe that's what i secretly hope to be when i grow up and have some soul in your voice thanks yeah i've the thing i have in common with richie Cotton, i guess is my love for soul music and orange like 60s philly soul uh, 60s and 70s era philly soul which he's mentioned many times that he's fond of and was crucial to him developing his, his vocal style he loved those soul singers from the you know stacks and motown and any soul singer from the 60s or 70s really sends me talking to jason almore so let's talk about a few of the songs on the record the first thing we did here was fragile tell me about that one how that came together that was just one of those songs that came together the music and the the lyrics and everything just kind of wrote itself in, in about five minutes it was one of those where I think Tom Petty said famously that, you know, sometimes they all come in on the same bus, mm-hmm. you know, all the, all the ideas and everything. It just works out, and the song pretty much writes itself. And that's what happened with this. And I guess when I listen back to it now, I, I can hear a heavy King's X influence. There's a couple of riffs that I I didn't steal, but subconsciously they were in there. And, oh, hey, that sounds like the Dogman record from King's X. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, there's a couple of a little riffs in there that are, whew, I'm glad I didn't copy it note for note because I'd already had this song recorded by the time I figured out that, that I'd written a King's X song. <laughs> there's Hey Man, there's nothing wrong with that. One of my all-time favorite bands. Oh, man, that, that Dog Man album is so heavy and good. I mean, everything King's X does is good. But for sure. That album in particular is really crucial in my, uh, in my development. Let's talk about Burning Bridge. Tell me about that one. That may be the longest one... The, the song that I wrote the longest time ago, and, and the band has been doing that one, you know, it's a little more subdued. It's not quite as all-out rock as, as some of the other tracks, so we're able to play that one when we're hired at, uh, you know, blues venues or blues rock stuff. A lot of the places we play live, they don't want to hear the heavier stuff. They want to, you know, they want a little more subdued, so that's one that we're able to play, you know, pretty much anywhere we go, so it's been... It, it, it was able to be developed over several years of, of trial and error live. And that's one of my favorite tracks on the album. I thought it came out really well. There's a, uh, what sounds like a B3 Hammond organ on there, but it's not. It's a guitar mm. uh, played through a Leslie cabinet, uh, which is something that Eric Clapton and, and, and those guys used to do. But I thought I really liked the way it, it came out. I was kind of going for that, that John Lord deep purple organ sound. And, and I feel like I captured it pretty close on guitar. Talk with Jason Elmore about Rise Up Lights, the new record. And then right before the record came out, we heard None for All. Tell me about that one. That one was written you know, pretty much straight up right after Eddie Van Halen passed. I was just kind of wanting to do something to honor him in that style, uh, again, without being a copycat, without copying any licks directly. And, and I just sat down, and, and that's another one that just kind of came together. Now, the solo t- had several different incantations. Um, I recorded this album, Rise Up Lights, over the course of about three years. Uh, the pandemic happened, and that kind of set things back a little bit financially. And then just the rest of the time was me either coming up with the money to pay for the sessions or just not being able to say, okay, this is finished. I, I kept wanting to redo lines and parts, and I, I could sing better you know, at the-, at the third year than I did at the first year so anything that I had played or sang two years later I, I could play it better so I kept wanting to redo things and, and those two solos in that song in particular went through several changes and finally I just said hey, I'm going to write this thing and, and get it as close to what maybe Eddie Van Halen or Steve Vai would have played without being a copycat directly and I'm pretty pleased with the way it turns out now I have to go back and learn how to now learn how I played it so I can do it live <laughs> Talking with Jason Elmore about Rise Up Lights. I'd be remiss, Jason, if we didn't talk about Hoodoo Witch and uh, the other guys in your band. Yeah, yeah, we've been together quite a while. There's Mike Talbot's been playing drums with me for, uh, well, he was on the second album and the third and, and the fourth. I guess we've been playing together about 11 or 12 years, maybe. And then Brandon Katona plays bass. I think he's been playing with us for close to 10 years also. I bet it's been eight or nine years. Um, if not ten, that we just have that the good fortune of having good chemistry together. We've played a, a lot of shows, big and small, bad and good, and, and we're always able to uh, just bring out the best in each other. And 
we've just developed that, that relationship musically over the years, thankfully. Jason, what are you hoping to accomplish in 2024? In 2024, I, I hope to write more. I don't want it to be five or six years between music releases. I don't know that people are, are really releasing full albums as much anymore. It seems to be more in vogue to release singles and EPs. So I'm, I'm probably going to focus on that. Uh, I've got a couple of songs that are nearly finished and hope to just kind of re- release those maybe by the end of the year. But regardless, definitely, I hope to, to figure out how to play the guitar and sing better. That's just a, a constant work in progress. I practice every day, and that's what I do. That's what I'm going to keep doing. Hopefully I'll figure it out. Jason, if people want to keep in touch with you and the band and everything that's going on in your world, how can they best to go about doing that? We're on all the, the usual social medias and stuff, YouTube, all that. And anybody can go to jasonelmore.net, and there's links to my YouTube channel, and my, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Jason, thank you for being on with us today. We appreciate it, and all the best going forward. Hey, thanks so much for having me, and uh, I can't wait to get back up to Iowa again soon. Hopefully, uh, maybe in 2024, uh, I can make it up that way, and we can talk in person. That would be great. I look forward to that. Jason Elmore. Thanks so much, thanks so much, Mark. I appreciate you having me. Oh, you're welcome. Jason Elmore, our guest on the Scar Card, the new classic rock that rocks, on 103.7 The Fox. Crank it.